שלמה המלך, there's a midrash that talks, talks about his throne. His throne. He built his throne. His throne had more sophisticated technology, has more sophisticated technology than anything we have in the world today. Anything we have in the world today. People think because they have iPhones and iPads and i-something, they think that we have sophisticated technology. If you read the Midrash that talks about the throne of Shlomo Melech, which by the way, Chashverosh tried taking, this throne had technology that's unbelievable. First and foremost, you were, he was the only one that was allowed to sit in it. Why? You had to have codes. There was a lion on one side, and there was a, a golden lion, and a golden eagle. Now, as soon as he came, there's no electricity in those days. There's no batteries. There's no, uh, you know, Siri. Right? But he goes over there. On the first step, before he takes the first step, he says a verse in the Torah. As soon as he says a verse in the Torah, the, uh, the eagle's wing comes golden eagle. Golden eagle. It's not, uh, you know, microprocessors. Golden eagle. The eagle goes, lifts his leg up, goes to the next step. Continues saying verse for every step. Eventually he gets to the throne, sits down. As soon as he sits on the throne, there was a golden dove. Not that they painted a real dove in gold, like it was gold. Golden dove flew and put and carrying his, uh, his, his uh, crown and put it on his head. Put it on his head. Now what happens if you don't know the code? You don't know the verses? Well, that happened. Paro. Paro of that day, after Shlomo Melech died, Paro tried taking the throne. He wanted to go on the throne, and he didn't know the verse. So he just said, uh, Muhammad Ali, he said. So instead of the eagle lifting him, the lion took his arm hit him in the back, broke his back. He was a paraplegic for the rest of his life. No one was able to sit in his throne. And this is from gold. Furthermore, Shlomo HaMelech was the only one that knew where to find the seven different types of gold in the world. There are seven, Gemara says there are seven different types of gold in the world. Different shades and colors, but most importantly, they have different uh, 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 abilities. One of those golds, one of the golds that he had, was a gold that produces gold. Meaning, you take a bar of gold, you put it in a drawer, you come back the next day, there's two bars. You leave it in the drawer, the next day there's four bars. It gives birth to another bar, another bar, it continues expanding. Everybody's asking, where's this gold? What do you know, Rabbi Ruben? I know, I know, I'm just not telling you. That's where my millions come from. Anyway... He had this gold. He knew where to find it. And that's how he built an entire city of gold. The entire Bet HaMikdash was full of gold. When the Bet HaMikdash was destroyed, all the goyim, they took the gold from the Bet HaMikdash. But they, when they brought all this gold from the Bet HaMikdash to the market, there was so much surplus, extra gold in the world now, that the price of gold collapsed all over the world. That's how much gold Shlomo HaMelech had. Because his gold continued producing gold, but nobody knows where this gold is anymore. Except me. <laughs> but the point is, Rabotai, is that he had the understanding of where to get this, which part of the world. He also knew where to get the Shamir worm. A special type of worm that would uh, had radiation come out of it so he could build the Bet Mikdash without using metal. He would cut the stones. If you go to the Kotel Ma'aravi, the western wall, you see these stones are massive. They're huge stones, but they weren't cut by metal. Because you weren't allowed to build the Bet dust with metal. Because metal is the sign of war. So how do you cut these huge giant stones? It was a special worm. It's called a Shamir worm. That radiation came out of it. And it would cut the stones. Only Shlomo Melech knew where to find this. He knew that uh, Ashmedai, the king of the demons, he knew it. He, tra he knew how to trap him. And he got him to bring it to him. And so on and so forth. So there are many, many things that Shlomo Melech was the only one in the world that knew. Uh, his, wi his wisdom is, uh, I mean, I don't know how to explain it. I heard one huge Talmud Chacham one time say, it's in essence, the closest we can, as humans, can get to God. 
Like, that's, that's how his wisdom is not like high IQ, like 200, 300. There's no IQ. No IQ. Like, like Einstein, you know, people think Einstein or, 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 or Newton, Isaac Newton, they think that uh, these people were really smart. Next to Shlomo Melech, they were retarded. That's, that's the comparison. That's the comparison. And so that's something that uh, you read. You read the Midrashim about Shlomo Melech, you see the things that he said, the things that he knew uh, were something unbelievable. But nonetheless, he still was human and made a human error uh, that uh, Akadosh Baruch Hu judged him for. Next question.